It's a vivid token. I didn't even pick it up. Oh, fucking. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by anyway. Come back! No. I have limited inventory space. <laughs> have you been increasing your inventory, like, off screen in this, or are you not bothered? I got to a certain size, and then I generally stopped because it got too expensive. Ow. Yeah, the there's fall damage in this game. Um, I mean, it makes sense, but... It's one of those things that's just a little weird because you're not used to verticality in Pokemon games. Yeah, yeah, it's something they could probably do more with if they were going to. I mean, I don't know. A uh, question for you guys. Do you think they should lean more open worlds with the next gen Pokemon games? Or do you think they should go back to something more traditional? Um I think it just depends on what they want to do with this Legend subseries now. Because if they want to do more Legend stuff, then I think the main game should go a little bit more traditional in that regard. Because this could this could be your big open world kind of game. I think I'm inclined to agree. Um, if only just because I, after having played it, I don't think the open world stuff added much to Scarlet and Violet. Um, really. I mean, it, it was nice, I guess, to finally see what an, an open world Pokemon game would be like, but there just, there wasn't really anything to do. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not a lot to do in the game other than just look around for Mon. Yeah, which I mean, I mean, granted, yes, looking around for Pokemon is one of the reasons why people would play, play Pokemon, but it was never like the reason I played Pokemon, you know, like... I didn't often spend a ton of time in the old games just running around in grass until I uh, knew exactly what Pokemon were in each area. Like, that was never what drew me to the game. It was more just, like, the adventure itself, and if I found a rare Pokemon, neat. Um, also, Jesus Christ, level 85, Garchomp. Why, do we, why are we here? Oh, you survived that? Damn. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I had double outraged already. That would, that would, uh, that would do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think these are the highest level wild mon you can ever find in any Pokemon game. Is level eighty five. Um, <laughs> go Braviary. Are you fucking kidding me? That's level eighty five. Gotcha. <laughs> You're level eighty. You can handle it. Um, I think, I think Red's Pikachu is still the highest level thing. Period. I think. Uh, Red's Pikachu 80, was level 80. 81. No, it was 88. No. In Heart Gold Soul Silver, I think. In Heart Gold and Soul. Oh, that's right, because they got the I thought the, it was 90 yeah. something in Heart Gold Soul Silver. No, I think it was 88. Well, let, us, let us quickly Google. Let's see. Ooh, that was almost 10 seconds of silence. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. I'll, leave I'll leave my mic. I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll leave my mic unmuted so you guys can hear my wonderful keystrokes. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh, god damn it, John. I should have known you've been hmm. you've been turned into a filthy mechanical keyboard user. Um No, that's actually it's actually not it's tactile. It's, what what's the difference? Uh one makes a really loud clicking noise, the other one does not. If you think that's loud, then yeah, you, you need to hear an actual mechanical keyboard. One with clicky keys. Listen, I used to I, have one I of those, have, and then it got I really have, loud and obnoxious. You know, when in many a Discord call, we're just talking about someone, and someone's all, and I, you, yeah, you, you can't hear what. Imagine that, but like three times as loud. That's actually why I stopped using mechanical, well, clicky keys, I should say, um, because it got so obnoxious, especially with this mic. Do you use like your fancy mic for like when you're just on like call, hanging out with people? Yeah, because it's, it's always connected to the PC. Oh, okay. So, so it's like I'm, I always have um, my headphones plugged into it, too. So like I'm rarely using external speakers for my computer. Like, I almost always have headphones on, which is okay, but it's also like fucking your earbuds. Well, the headphones in particular start to wear off, so you have to, like, replace them sooner rather than later. Um, I used to have, like, the really big ones um, that, like, went all the way over your ears, like the noise-canceling ones. Um, and when yeah. I took them off after being on the computer for a while, they, they got really gross. Like there was yeah. all the sweat and crap in them and it's like, ugh. And oil. Yeah. yeah. Cause your, your face, your, your head just generates oil that deteriorates the material after a while. 
Humans are gross. But they're really easy to. It's really easy to fix or replace. You know, you, you're just swapping the buds for something else. That's it. So you don't have to like because you don't like don't do what I did where years ago you would just fucking replace the whole ass headphone. It's like don't do that because that's that's gonna run you like 80, 90 bucks for a quality headphone when you can just spend five, ten bucks to replace the budding around the ear. But that's all. Yeah, the little fluffy parts. Yeah. Uh, Pikachu is level eighty eight. Yeah, and heart gold and soul silver. Hold on, but is that still the highest level Pokemon though? I think. Oh, so. like that you can just fight in single player Pokemon? I would say yes, unless they upped Cynthia or Barry in BDSP. Hold on, hold on. I'm looking it up. Um. Oh, you can find a level 100 Magikarp in Platinum's Resorts area, or Black and White 2's Nature Reserve. Um. Uh, Okay, so Lissy. looks like uh, Red had already been outclassed. Poor guy. Uh, Cynthia's Garchomp is also level 88. Gotcha. That's the highest uh, she it looks like that's the highest it gets in uh, BDSP. So she tie with Red. Gotcha. Yeah. But I would say she has the overall better team. Well, yes. Fuck but. you. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Listen, I, I just I just don't. I just... No, okay, here's the thing. I get it. I understand why Cynthia is as popular as she is, because she's a pretty blonde lady, and the internet has no shame. I, I get it, but... um, I mean, it's not even that. Like, I, her team's really I love good. her dress. Her team's really good. Like She's competent, but I also love the dress. The black dress. I mean, yeah, but... Her only personality trait is having a hobby. Since when does a personality matter? <laughs> in Pokemon, never, because no characters in this series have a personality. Oh, snap. Um, but, like, I just I just don't get it. <laughs> There's not a character arc. She's just like, her boss fights hard, and she's a pretty blonde lady. Okay. Sure. I mean, sometimes that's all you need to be, though. <laughs> well, you're a Metroid fan, so that also makes sense. Yes, of you're, course. You're, you're used, no, to, a you're used black to liking suit, blonde ladies no, no. with no personality. She has the Ome she has the Omega suit. Hey, excuse the, me, the, I read the, the Nintendo the, Power the, comic. <laughs> <laughs> also, the was the plasma suit black? Uh, no, uh, the Omega suit is black in Prime One. Oh, I always called it the, I always called it the Bazon suit. Sorry. Oh, I, I hold on. What am I thinking of? Is there an Omega suit? Because 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 you're not wrong either. I think it's called the Phase. I I think that it, like in the game it was called the Omega suit. Hold on. But let's see. Hold on. Oh man, fake. Right, so Samus caps at level eighty eight. <laughs> <laughs> fake Metroid fan Johnny here. Let's see here. Uh, Metroid Prime. Let's see here. Um, Metroid Prime. A uh, final upgrade is the Phase on suit. Okay. Okay. What am I thinking of with the Omega suit then? Are you thinking of the Omega parrot you get it from? No, 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 no. I, I mean, it could be that. What am I thinking of Omega? Oh, oh the Omega, Omega, Omega suit, suit is the um, is Samus's color, uh, suit at the end of Metroid Fusion when you get the right when she gets her orange color back. Yeah, right. Which always looked really weird to me. Um, I never really liked the Fusion design with the orange colors. I just, I just. It, no, I would it's, agree. It's weird. I don't know. To me, that suit peaks at blue or purple, because fuck Varia. Oh, with the, the eye bleeding, like, yellow and Varia purple. is very ugly yeah. in Fusion. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah, hold on. I need to... I need to I need to see it again. Give me give me one second. Um, Metroid yeah, Fusion. Yeah, floor, oh, thing. yeah. The It's the Wario. It's Wario's color scheme. It's, like, bright purple <laughs> and bright yellow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not even not, not even bright yellow. It's a highlight uh, highlighter marker yellow. Yeah, it's and on the Game Boy Advance coloring scheme, it's like, man, who thought that was a good idea? Uh, Oops, somebody. Uh, uh, no, no, sure. Galactic Federation, I guess, because well, no, they didn't technically make the fusion suit. The fusion suits no. like the just the remnants of what was left in the suit. Yeah, it's like the power suit, but you stripped out. So the various suits essentially like the power suit. If it were a car where you took off the hubcaps, wheels, outside, everything but the engine. No, I would say yeah. No, like the 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 OG Fusion suit is just the car's frame 
like with a transmission and engine and shit like that still on it. Yes. Okay. It's like you can still move around in it, but you have little to no protection. Man, you you, you just gotta you gotta ask for Adam to give you authorization to install the car radio. Well, officer, I couldn't tell you how fast I was going on the account that my car doesn't even have a speedometer yet. I got to get that upgrade first. Same as the police are on your tail. You have authorization to use the speedometer. <laughs> Chokes on you. I don't have a rear view mirror yet, so I can't see those police. Bear of horse. So we did the space time distortion off screen because it didn't spawn anything useful, so. The space time distortion. Oh no, it's it's still there. I it's something that I wish that they did more with, like because it's neat the first time you go in there, but everyone is basically the same. Yeah. Well, this guy's name's Bryce, but boring like with an I, so you know he's different from Bryce the Gen and, Two Bryce. Yeah, it's not our Bryce. Then again, well, Bryce was just the old ice trainer. I recall. Yeah. Was there anything else like He's the main manga? villain in the Gen 2 Pokemon manga. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually like weird. The, the Gen 1 and 2 Pokemon manga is very trippy but a really good read if you ever have the time. Um They had a really nice box set of them uh for a while. I don't know if it's still offered anymore. Well, they used they used to release them in standard uh manga volume size. Until they got to X and Y, when they released them in like one or two chapter little mini things for like four bucks. Oh, uh, so they're uh, basically they're basically like comic floppies now, and it's just like yeah, I was gonna say like, manga floppies. It's just like ugh. no one wants it. It's no right one wants the, it this way. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say just right for the trade. Also, stop doing this because <laughs> you know manga, which has been doing better than it ever has been before, looked at the floundering Western comic market and was like, "What if we were more like that?" Uh, <laughs> We're sure that Ice Beam is not going to hit anybody else along that path, right? It extends infinitely, so it's probably going to hit somebody or go to space. Does it get affected by gravity? <laughs> get fucked, son. <laughs> Gen 4 really liked its weird gimmick Pokemon, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, it did. No, I, I identify a weird gimmick Pokemon. Um, like, so like Wormadam and Burmy, which have different colors depending on what terrain they're in. Like, um, yeah. there's the, uh, I don't remember their name, but the ones that are blue and pink depending on what side of the ocean you find them on. Um, Shellos. The, Shellos, that's the one. Yeah, there's the hippos that swap color on gender. Um, I don't know if you would necessarily call Vespa Queen a gimmick Pokemon, but it certainly is meant to be. It is the first Pokemon, I think, where gender matters on its evolution. Um, if we're not counting Nidoran, uh, which is technically two separate uh, species. Um, am I right? Is that is that the first Pokemon where gender mattered for evolution? Uh, uh, the Nidorans, yeah. Well, no, other than oh. the Nidorans, because they're different species. Um, yeah, uh, the Vespa Queen, I think so. Oh, I guess you could count, like, Glade, but that's also gen, this gen, so, you know, um, there's that. There's a couple, oh yeah, there's uh, the, the parrot guy, where you can use the microphone to give it its own cry. There's just, like, a lot of weird gimmick Pokemon in this, in this region. Which I guess isn't necessarily a problem it's just striking how many of them there are you think this guy styles his chest hair i mean it's not growing like that naturally i mean well, no. you don't know hmm <laughs> Dude, that fucking chest hair goes down deep. It makes me uncomfortable, actually. Yeah, because, like, it's... I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I have a hairy fucking chest, too. But that shit is thick and is really close to the nipple. I think... I think it might just... I think it might be fake. Uh, 
This chest here is spray painted. Well, because look, it's like all really, really hairy in just that specific area, and then none anywhere else. Like, you're telling me he shaves his entire chest like that every single day? Well, you don't need to shave it every day, but he does have to style it, I'd imagine. Man, everyone in this game freaking cheats. I know, right? These frost last is only level 24. They do do that a lot, yeah, where there's like other Pokemon out there to annoy you. And down frost last goes. Oh, yeah, they did. Frost last also is, I think, female only evolution. Yes, it in, is. In Gen 4. In Gen 4. <laughs> it's like Rudo's like, can we please go somewhere else and fucking free? No, they mentioned that earlier. She says that I'm not cold. Oh, uh, she's lying. <laughs> fetch quest. Yep, fetch quest. Need my clan's help. Do we? I'm pretty capable without all of you. Well, unless you accept, you're not going to be able to complete it at all. So, yes, I say you really do need my claim. Damn it. Oh, yeah, Snowpoint Temple. <laughs> That's in Gen That's 4, in Gen right? 4, yeah. I forget when you go there. It's it's north of the gym, the ice gym in Gen 4. So we're like up. It's like as far as Hokkaido goes, we're at the tippy top of it. Okay. One soldier squat. Two soldier squats. <laughs> and I'm done for today. <laughs> Time to celebrate with eight cheeseburgers. Yo, you just leaked my uh, workout routine, John. God. <laughs> Milkshakes that are half fat. I can drink two. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. Why did they end the cutscene for us to just go to another cutscene two feet away from this one? Yeah. You were eavesdropping, weren't you? Okay, take two, two steps forward and it just grabs her. <laughs> we can't show her flying away because that would cost the animation budget. Yeah, looking back at this now, the graphics didn't bother me when I was actually playing the game. But, like, when I'm watching it like this, I'm... Again, it's another. It's just another instance, like I mentioned in one of the previous parts, where when we know that they can do better, it just frustrates me to see a game that looks this ugly. To be fair, I think it's one of those things you just notice more when you're on a, a, the, the spectator is in, and not so much when you're playing because you're distracted. Well, I no, just I, by I virtue of playing noticed the game. when I was playing. I just was able to ignore it and put myself in a different space. But, like, the repeated animations and the... The constant blacking out because they can't be bothered to animate specific things. The lack of voice acting, too. I'm I'm really starting to get a little... Well, I've been thinking about them not having voice acting for years now. You're the biggest media franchise on the planet. Hire some damn actors. You already do for everything else. I... I mean, I think that they, at least since Sword and Shield, they should have had voice acting. Um, because you know it was on a console, they had the space to do it. But and I just I don't know. I I wonder if Pokemon Company has a vision for what they want to do, like where they want the games to go, or if they're just kind of trying stuff to see what works. Um, because this this game feels so weird when compared to um. Scarlet and Violet, it feels like two, which which is, I was going to say, it feels like two different teams trying out the make an open world Pokemon game in completely different ways, which when I say that aloud makes sense because it exactly is two different teams trying out open world Pokemon games in completely different ways. Um, I just, I wonder, 
like what are they trying to do do they were they making an open world pokemon game because that's what they wanted to do or were they doing it because they felt like that's what they needed to do with it i don't know Yeah, I'm not sure either. Ultimately, I think it just kind of depends on if they're following trends or not, because open world is the, you know, the new hot thing and all that, so. I mean, is it? It's not, it's, well, it's certainly still very popular, but, I mean, open world games have been really big for, like, what, a decade now, I think? You know, say so since, like, uh, yeah, because, like, folks have been playing Elder Scrolls. Like before, yeah, then, when before, did Skyrim yeah, come out? I was even a thing. Uh, uh like, PlayStation 3, 360. Like 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Skyrim <laughs> Horse. <laughs> um, hold on. I still have Google up. Um, Skyrim was 2010, I want to say. Uh, because it came out when I was in college. I don't I remember that much. Uh, I know everyone was playing it when I was when it came out. God, I keep, I just, this is what I get for just searching Skyrim. I'm clicking on different things and then, there we go. Wikipedia, <laughs> The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. November 11th, 2011. Okay, yeah. 12 years ago. Yeah, so. Oh my God. <laughs> and Starlink just came out. <laughs> that's, their, that's their space one, I'm right? glad that we've been averaging a Skyrim port roughly every four months. Um. You know, it's really nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Skyrim, obviously not the first open world game, but certainly one of the most influential and like best selling and market changing, I would say, which only like further became the case. And, yeah, and, 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 and to be fair, like before then, like Oblivion did really well. And too, Oblivion did, did well. But I would say it's, like, the difference between, like, um, it, it's kind of backwards, but the difference between Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, where Ocarina of Time was a huge game that changed the marketplace, versus Majora's Mask was just a, a good Zelda game that people yeah. played and certainly was popular. But, you know, Majora's Mask didn't usher in any major... Like mar like ways that people make their games the way that Ocarina of Time did, and I would say it's the same thing with Oblivion. Oblivion certainly existed, and I'm sure it had influence in some ways, but Skyrim was the big one. Quotation marks. And capital letters. <laughs> 